Hello, Bishop Wooden here. It's Friday evening, round about 6.30. <laughs> Normally when I come to you, it's around Thursday, oh, around noonday, we do the shoot and then we get it out to invite you to come and join us for the Thursday night service. But today is Friday and uh, it's time to wind down and uh, we're, we're getting ready to take a break. But I have a video that I want to show you uh, because I, it was sent to me a, another powerful black minister, a man of God, who is standing sounding the alarm. The alarm that he's sounding is a controversial one because he's sounding the alarm about an organization that we all know and love. The NAACP, and I've said many times when I reference uh, the NAACP that it is an organization that have done uh, many great things and I owe a tremendous debt of thanks to the NAACP. But my friends, today's NAACP is not our fathers, nor our grandfathers, nor our great grandfathers NAACP. Today's NAACP has teamed up with uh, people like the murderous, and yes I use the word murderous, the murderous organization of Planned Parenthood founded by Margaret Sanger, a wicked white racist woman. She's probably in the hottest part of hell. She spoke many times uh, for the Ku Klux Klan. They loved her, her, her preaching. And this woman started the NW, she started Planned Parenthood, excuse me, and she even said this, that the purpose of Planned Parenthood is the extermination of the Negro race. Well, you've heard me talk about her before. It's amazing that an organization that was basically started to exterminate us, uh, the great NAACP is in bed with that organization. Now, I'm going to show you a clip. Please do not turn this off. Watch this, and I'm going to come back at the conclusion, and I want to tell you something. Because as you watch this, you're going to ask yourself, what happened to the NAACP? And the answer uh, may very well be nothing. I'll join you at the conclusion of this clip. I've been grappling with the fact that the NAACP is in bed with the very organization that has brought black, gen black genocide to our community. Dr. Alveda King, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, has tried on at least three occasions to bring to this organization's attention the black genocidal plot of people like Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood to exterminate the black community. And the stonewalling has been astounding. Alveda King literally has gone to the street along with myself to say to the NAACP, please deal with this issue of black genocide. The NAACP has responded by hiding and trying to prevent their convention goers to hear about black genocide. They've even gone to the extent of using buses to block our demonstration about black genocide in front of Cobo Hall where the, their convention was going on. They have literally put black paper across their windows so that the convention goers at the NAACP convention could not see the demonstration going outside that included Alveda King. There is definitely a conspiratorial plot being hatched and has been hatched by the NAACP to keep from their people the fact that they are co-conspirators in the genocide of their own people. And Benjamin Hooks, one of the future former presidents of the NAACP, once personally told me that the NAACP would not bring this subject to the floor because it would, they believed it would tear up the NAACP. Even the media has conspired with the NAACP to keep this issue from the attention of the black community and the public at large. I have seen the news media literally hide their trucks so that they would not be in a position to have to cover the demonstrations in front of Cobo Hall only to bring them out after the demonstrators had left. This is an outrage that the black community 
is having the life of its babies destroyed and the NAACP and the media are knowingly conspiring to keep this information from the public. This is an outrage and it should be dealt with by every fair-minded American. Hey, it's hard to take that they would uh, put up buses and block out the windows to stop blacks from arguing for blacks to be born. In this country, 1,876 black babies approximately are aborted in this country per day. And if you're watching this and you've had an abortion and you've repented of your sins, I want you to know that the God of the Bible has forgiven you and, and I want you to live. But please join me and join the preachers like you saw on the video. Join people across this country to help save the next baby. They are killing us. Blacks are being exterminated. We are the only race in this country, I don't know, perhaps in the world, that are actually aborting more babies than we are giving birth to. And I wonder often, where are the preachers? Where are the solid men of God? Where, where is that fiery a gospel preacher who can roar. Where is your voice when your own people are being exterminated? When when Naaman, when Haman, excuse me, learned that there was a plan of genocide. It, it wasn't Haman, it was Mordecai. When Mordecai learned that Haman had planned to exterminate the Jews, Mordecai made noise. He got Esther's attention and he saved his race. Where are the Mordecais among the black race? In my conclusion, I said to you, you may ask what happened to the NAACP, and I said the answer may be nothing. Well, if you will read uh, the book, this book written by Burgess Owens. Burgess Owens is a former NFL uh, champion. He played for the, uh, the Raiders, the Oakland Raiders, played pro professional football. Uh, in his book, Liberalism, or how to turn good men into whiners, weenies, and wimps. In his national bestseller, I might add, he says this, and he speaks of the, uh, one of the first members of the NAACP. As a matter of fact, this man was <clears throat> one of their charter executive board members. Uh, you know him, you've heard of him. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois. Uh, this man in 1910, uh, tremendous, ed tremendously educated man. He was the first black to get a Ph.D. from Harvard. He was accepted within the northern white intellectual circles as the best of his race. As an avowed socialist, he was chosen to be the only black executive board member of the newly formed NAACP uh, by its founding board of directors comprised of wealthy white socialists, white progressives, white liberals, white Marxists, white atheists, and humanists. For the next 24 years, he would be the face and the voice of the NAACP. Salaried, uh, to author its outreach magazine, The Crisis. He would serve also on the board with renowned eugenicist and KKK sympathizer Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood. She introduced to the poor urban black community a new birth control concept called abortion. Listen to me, my friends. This woman, this woman, she, in her writings, she left no doubt about her contempt for the black race, which I am such a proud part of. I'm so glad to be a black man. I don't know life any other way. And if the Lord came today and said, uh, Patrick, I'll make you over and make you anything you want me to be. You know what I would tell God? I'd tell God, Lord, you got it right the first time. But Margaret, let me get back to her. In her own words, she called blacks human weed. 
reckless breeders spawning cause of spawning human beings who never should have been born how could W.E.B. Du Bois, how could Planned uh, Parenthood, how is it possible that a black organization could have anything, anything whatsoever to do with a person or their organization that has this contempt for our great race? NAACP and its black voice and face W.E.B. Du Bois worked tirelessly to discredit the charter, the character, reputation, and fundraising eff efforts of one of its competing voices, capitalist, Christian, and Tuskegee Institute founder, Booker T. Washington. Due to his message of industry, morality, and self-sufficiency, the black community had experienced a tremendous success and had garnered a high degree of respect throughout the North and the South. Eventually, though, due to the untimely death of Washington in 1915, the seeds of socialism championed by the NAACP would overshadow his message of free enterprise and self-empowerment. What happened to the NAACP, my friends? If Burgess Owens is correct, if this historical data is true, if it is, then the answer is nothing. That there has always been a group of people who believe in a royal class of blacks called the Talented Tenth. The Talented Tenth. And, and they believe that this Talented 10% of black people, we, we, we want to cultivate them and we want to let them grow and we want to use them and, and these liberal Marxist, leftist, atheist whites would bring this talented 10% of blacks in. Well, what about the 90%? What about the 90? Well, Margaret Sanger has the answer to the 90. Let's kill them. Let's get them to abort. Let's get them to abort more of their babies than they give birth to. And let's get the blacks who want to be somebody and want to be invited to the dinners and be included into the social arena, uh, you to, to get our money and to get our approval, you got to, no matter what you say, you got to change your position on abortion. You can't talk against it. You can't cry out loud against it. You can't say anything. That's the price you pay and we'll make you rich. We'll set you up. We'll do good things for you. But you got to help us kill your own people. My friends, it's an ugly, it's an ugly, it's an ugly story. But it appears to be a true one. I say to all African Americans of goodwill who's watching this, regardless to your uh, political uh, affiliation, if this is not a Democrat issue, it's not a Republican issue, and don't let nobody demagogue it. And, and, and it is true, it is true that the NAACP has historically done a many of good things, and I applaud that. But you can't just rest on that. You know who else did good things? You know who else walked up and down in the, in the mountain of God? Do you know who directed the choir in heaven? Do you know who was so beautiful that when he came into the presence of God the Father, you know, God the Father is light. And when this person came into his presence, all of the beautiful gems and stones and diamonds and precious stones were a part of his covering. So when he came into the presence of God Almighty, he would light up glory with a kaleidoscope of colors. And it was beautiful and it was amazing. And he was anointed. He was called the anointed a cherub that covereth. Oh, he did great things. He was awesome. His name means star of the morning. His name was Lucifer. His name is Lucifer. He's called Satan. And he's called the devil. I'm not calling the NAACP Satan. Nor am I calling them the devil. 
But I will say this. You cannot rest on your laurels. You can't say, or we can't say, because they did great things yesterday, that we shouldn't even check them or challenge them today when they're doing wicked things. Championing the calls of people who are, who are identified by their lifestyle, by who they have sex with, and it's deviant sex at that. One of the biggest clients today for the NAACP is the LGBTQ community. The very community that the God of the Bible, the very behavior, the behavior that the God of the Bible calls wicked. The Bible teaches, thou shalt not shed innocent blood. The Bible teaches that we are to be the voice. Proverbs 31 and 8, open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such that are appointed to destruction. Jesus speaks of the least of these. My friends, the very least of these. It's got to be the unborn. And you have to ask yourself, I'm closing. Why is it that 78% of Planned Parenthood's abortuaries are within two miles of high black population centers? You got to ask yourself, why is it that the black race can never become any more than 11 to 12, maybe 13% of the population. I've been hearing that all my life. Why is it that the Hispanic population is 17% and growing and other groups grow, but blacks don't grow? Now, it can't be because we're not having sex. Now, you know that. We sing about sex, we dance, we dance, we dance with sex, we groove with sex, we rap about sex, we, we croon about sex. Come on, come on, come on. One of our big hits back in the 70s, Billy Paul, come on, let's make a baby. I mean, we, the OJ sing about baby making love. We talk about it. So sex, man, I mean, we got love won't let me wait. Oh, uh, let's get it on. Come on, and we can just talk about this stuff. So we have sex, and we are fertile. But why can't we grow? And everybody knows, politically, when your numbers are small, your strength is small. Tomorrow morning, the Happy Warriors will be out at the Women's Choice Abortion Clinic fighting for the lives of the unborn. Guarantee you, if this coming Saturday is, if, if all the other Saturdays are any indication of what this Saturday will be, it will be an almost uninterrupted stream of black people going to the clinic, escorted in by white people to abort their babies. Pray for us. Pray for me. And if you're African American, if you're black, if you're a brother or sister watching this, let your voice be heard. Don't challenge me, because you can't. I'm telling you the truth. Challenge the NAACP. I didn't say throw them away. I didn't say shoot them. I didn't know. I didn't say uh, get rid of them. I said challenge them. But if they are going to team up with Planned Parenthood, homosexuals, and all those folk who care nothing for us, and we don't need them. Now you have a good day. Thanks for listening. I love you. Share this message. Thanks.